In this video, we're going to discuss Maxwell relations. Now, in order to begin our discussion on Maxwell relations, I want you to just consider a general function z that's a function of x and y. We know that the total derivative will look something like this. And we know that if z is a state function, so if z is a state function, then we know that the mixed partial derivatives are going to be equal. And so by that, I mean that the second derivative of z dx dy is going to be equal to the second derivative of z dy dx. Right, so we know that this is true for any uh, variable, any function that is a state function, right? And we've seen a lot of state functions at this point in thermodynamics, our internal energy, enthalpy, our two free energies, right? Uh, we have a lot of things that fit this criteria. And so what Maxwell relations are, are really useful partial derivative relationships between state variables that exploits this property of state functions, that the mixed partial derivatives must be equal. So in order to, to simplify this a little bit, let's say that this partial derivative is equal to a property called M. And then let's say that this uh, partial derivative is equal to some property N, right? Then we know that we can re-express the total derivative for Z in the following way, where we'll have DZ is equal to M DX plus N DY. Right, so we know that we can re-express the total derivative in this fashion if we correlate these partial derivatives to specific state properties, right? So the Maxwell relation, uh, if we were to relate the uh, partial, these state variables using the mixed partials being equal, then we can write the following partial derivative relationship. We can say that dm dy at constant x is going to be equal to dn dx at constant y, right? This is the Maxwell relation, right? So I'll call this guy the Maxwell relation, right? And you can basically derive this type of partial derivative relationship for any differential. And really is, is something is you more or less call this the cross derivative rule, um, an easy way to remember it. So I just like to draw like a little arrow from each variable. So you can say, you know, we're differentiating M with respect to Y at constant X, right? That's the first partial. And then the second partial is DN, DN DX at constant y, right? So you can always kind of just draw arrows from the, the main variable to each changing differential in order to kind of remember how to derive each of these Maxwell relations. So we can do this for every one of our thermodynamic potentials, right? So let's start with the internal energy. So if we consider the internal energy, Right, its differential is du is equal to TDS minus PDV, right? So given this differential, right, it has a very similar form to our uh, general function here, right? So we can derive a Maxwell relation for this guy. So the Maxwell relation that we can derive from the internal energy would be dt dv right, going from M to dy, right, T dv at constant S is equal to negative dp ds at constant, at constant v, right? So this is the Maxwell relation that you can derive from the internal energy differential, right? So basically applying this cross derivative rule, we know that the mixed partials are gonna be equal, so this relationship must be true. Now, note that I included the negative sign, right? You have to. Um, this is generally expressed in terms of these two terms being added together. If you have a negative sign, you have to account for that guy in these 
uh, Maxwell relation. So it's going to be very important to keep that in mind because it'll affect the way that you'll interpret these relationships, whether something's increasing or decreasing. Okay, so we did this for the internal energy. Uh, we can do this for all of our thermodynamic potentials. So next, let's do the enthalpy. So if we consider the enthalpy, right, we have a differential for the enthalpy. It is dH is equal to TDS plus VDP. Right, so starting from this, this differential, again, we can derive a Maxwell relationship, right? So in this case, it would be dT dP at constant S is going to be equal to dV dS at constant P, right? So this is the Maxwell relation that we get from the enthalpy differential, right? Hopefully at this point, you're starting to get the pattern, right? Of how to apply this, this cross derivative rule to each one of these derivatives in order to get a Maxwell relation. Okay, let's do uh, Hemholtz. So for the Hemholtz free energy, our differential for the Hemholtz is going to be negative PDV minus SDT. So starting from this differential, the Maxwell relation, dP dt at constant V, it's going to be equal to dS dV at constant T. Now, note that I didn't include any negative signs since both of these terms are negative. Obviously, those cancel out to give you a positive. Okay, and the last one is the Gibbs free energy. So for Gibbs, our differential for the Gibbs free energy is VDP minus SDT. And so the Maxwell relation that we can derive here would be dV dt at constant P. It's going to be equal to negative dS dP at constant T. Right, so this gives you your four Maxwell relations that you can derive from each thermodynamic potential, right? And now these may look fairly unspectacular right now, but having these relationships between these state variables can come in very handy trying to relate different properties. Um, like think for example, if you, you want to solve for the nth entropy change um, in some gas expansion, and you don't have a function for the entropy, but you have a function for the volume of that gas. Well, it might be kind of useful to be able to relate the entropy change to the volume change like we have in this different in this partial differential relationship that we derive from the Gibbs free energy. Right. So you can kind of see the utility of being able to relate to relate these variables in this way, um, even if right now they may look rather unspectacular.